How's it going everyone? So I've been kind of looking into this program called Hashlips Art Engine and I've been using it to kind of build out my own web API for generating a bunch of random NFT images. And one thing that I kind of came across in this code is a performance issue that we can kind of address and talk about. So what I want to do in this video is kind of show you some things that you can do in Node.js to make your code a little bit faster and some things that you might want to avoid. I'm not trying to um, criticize the person who made this code, but I just want to kind of show you ways, if you're kind of new to Node.js, what you can do to make things a little bit better and more performant. So how this code works is you basically run npm build, and you notice that's kind of running over and creating something and printing out like DNAs, right? So all that's really doing behind the scenes is it kind of looks through this layers directory, and I have a bunch of images, and it's randomly combining every layer together, right? So you have like one image of the background, it randomly picks a design, it randomly picks an egg and a shine, and it combines those all into a single image and prints it out into a build folder. Over here we have images with these like random eggs that are kind of built together as random NFTs. So when I first ran this code, I'm like, okay, this is actually taking quite a while, quite a while right? It's only able to churn through maybe like 10 or 20 images a second, which if you're kind of familiar with Node or programming, that's kind of slow, right? Just to take four images and kind of combine them together, it's, it's kind of slow and I kind of wonder like, is there a way to do this maybe faster? So the first thing I did was look through the code. So if you kind of like look to the package JSON or ESC, if I go to the package JSON and go to the build command, because that's the command that we ran, you'll see that it's just running index.js. So let's open index.js and you'll see that this is just running a start creating function. So start creating comes from main. So we can just go ahead and go to main and find that start creating. And you can kind of look through all this and get a better understanding of how it works. It's a lot of code. It's like 400 something lines of code. I probably would have split this up in the smaller modules so it's easier to understand. But as you scroll through it, you'll see that it's doing some things. It's basically creating a canvas or like a, yeah, it's creating a context or a canvas. And then it starts writing things to that canvas or draws the images to the canvas. And then later on, it basically um, saves the image to a file system and it also saves the metadata. So the first step or the first line of defense is what I would do is I'd find an area that may be kind of slow. Um, first thing I would do is I would basically, let's just do a console.time and I'm gonna say writing files. And this is kind of the approach I did. I went over through all the code and tried to find out like what functions are taking a lot of time. And I ended up finding that these, obviously they're writing to a file system. So they do take some time. Let's just go ahead and run npm build and that should print out like how long some of this stuff is taking. So we're talking like 150 milliseconds just to write some files, which is a pretty long time to wait. So I kind of like dived into these files. They're really easy. There's just a function I mean. I dived into the function. You see that there's a save file. And the first thing you'll notice if you're kind of experienced with Node is that it's doing a write file sync. This is a big no-no when you're writing node code because when you do synchronous functions, it blocks the entire thread until the file is done writing to disk. Now behind the scenes, node has a bunch of like underlying working threads that can handle writing multiple files at the same time. So if you do this sync call, you're basically throwing all those underlying threads away. And if you're on a multi-thread machine with a bunch of like ability to do a bunch of file IOs, you no longer can do it with the sync command. So the first thing I would do it's really easy is convert this to a promise. So let's say return new promise. And then that usually takes in a resolve and a reject function. And I just go ahead and call that same function, but get rid of the sync. This is how, this is another command in node. It's called write file. And instead there's a third argument that takes an error in data. And I can say, if there's an error, go ahead and call reject of error. And then also just call resolve like a type, so type resolve. And I think at this point, let me make sure I'm not missing anything. I'm probably missing a parenthesis somewhere. Let me go ahead and add one. All right, so that is a huge performance benefit, right? Because now we don't have to sit here waiting for this image to finish saving to disk before we can continue on building out more NFTs. So what I would recommend doing is, let's just run this and see if there's a speed improvement. So run npm build. And you'll notice that it still takes, you know, some time to do it, but we're looking more like 50 something seconds, right? We're not talking like 150, although some of them were kind of slow. So let's just go ahead and also uh, see if there's maybe something wrong with this save function. So let's go back to the main 
And again, we're just doing some debugging here. So I'm gonna go back to, um, where we call save image? We call it here. So I wanna make sure that, you know, let's focus on one at a time. Let's see if we can see if this is actually like increasing in performance or not. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a console timer there. So console time and time in, and just go ahead and rerun this. And again, it is still taking some time. So I don't know if our uh, changes actually improved anything. So I'll go ahead and look into this code one more time. And it turns out that this canvas to buffer is a synchronous operation, right? So this again is going to block the thread until it's done moving the canvas stuff to the image. So this is again, you don't want to run synchronous code if you're trying to loop over, you know, 10,000 NFT images. So what I would do instead, so if you actually look at the canvas, this is like a third party node module that's being installed. It actually has a, a, a second argument, a callback that you can do. Let's do some more refactoring here. I'm going to call the two buffer and I'm going to say, um, do the callback method. And we're going to do this. And I'm going to go ahead and just make sure I'm doing this correctly. So the same idea, we're going to basically do a promise that's going to call to buffer first. And it's going to call canvas to buffer. That should call a callback function and that should ultimately call the FS write file. So I know this is kind of kind of going all over the place here, but we are just going to basically take the buffer that we got and we're going to use that here. All right, let's 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 go ahead and see if we can fix up this code. Let's go ahead and review this one more time. So save image now returns a promise, which first calls canvas to buffer, which is an asynchronous operation now. The reason it's asynchronous is because we pass it a callback. That's just the way the library is defined. I actually have to go to the canvas library and look at that. But now we'll get a buffer at some point in the future when it's done rendering this to the, the image or when it's done taking the canvas and converting it to an image. And then after that's done, we're doing another asynchronous call to write that to a file. All right. So let's just go ahead and run this real quick and see what our time improvements are. Um, and you'll notice that it actually, um, so I actually, okay. So I actually went back and looked at it. If you look at the actual example, this is how you do asynchronous. So um, my mistake, I kind of just didn't remember how to do that. And by default, it does a PNG. So this is actually how you do it. You just pass it a callback and that should be asynchronous. So no, hopefully if I run this, this should be a lot faster. Or look at the milliseconds. This is like down to like 0 0.016 milliseconds, which is a hell of a lot faster than it was before, right? We're looking at like 100 milliseconds per image. Now we're kind of zooming through these. And again, if I didn't have my screen recording going, this would be a lot faster. And if we look at these images, there's a, there is an issue with these images. You'll see that it's kind of splicing canvases together. So there is a little bit of refactoring that we need to do on the actual code to allow this performance benefit to be utilized. And it's actually pretty easy. It turns out that there's a canvas object that's being created up here. And technically we could just cut this code and we could just put it right where we're just doing these images. So let me see where we start doing these like context stuff. Um, so here we loop over, this, this code took me some time to kind of understand what's going on, but basically we loop through all the different additions or all the different images we're trying to build and then we loop through the layers. So honestly, as long as you just do it somewhere here. All right, so this is basically looping through the additions. It's making sure that the DNA is unique. Um, but before we actually start doing the context stuff, you can literally just do this. And uh, in fact, I'll just do it at the very start of this. Make sure that's good. And that's basically to prevent that issue where I think we're sharing context or that we're sharing the canvas and it's kind of overriding. So let me run npm build now. Um, image smoothing, I forgot to copy this one over too. So let me go ahead and do const canvas. Let me go ahead and paste that in. All right, and I'm not 100% sure this code doesn't have like bugs, like changing stuff around because there's no tests or anything. Where's this complaining about? 133.
All right, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this function out too and kind of scope it. If you know much about like closures and stuff, we should be able to put this function and declare it basically around the same area where we said canvas is equal to. Um, again, this is just like a hack example to show you how stuff can kind of work. But um, let me just go ahead and put that underneath that I'll do here. All right, let's try it again and see what happens. Come on. To. Basically, anywhere that's kind of accessing this context, we have to do this little hack. Might as well just do it for add text too. But you can kind of get the idea. It's like I'm gonna put those down here too. Hopefully, that fixes the issue. All right, here we go. Let's see if this works. So we look at the images now. They're all done. Oh, canvas is not defined. Canvas to buffer. Again, this is a function that's kind of expecting a glo global state. So there's a lot of stuff I would kind of fix up with this entire setup. Um, because I don't like functions that kind of grab from global state. But let's see if this actually works now. <laughs> I have to just take a bunch of code and just move it around for right now for this tutorial or for this little, I'm kind of like moving code around just to get this to work for this example. But now I think if I look at the images, they should be good. Okay, so the image is fully built. Let me go ahead and delete that build folder and just double check. So now if I wanted to do like another 100, it should be a lot quicker than it was before. Okay, so that was with the change, with the performance speed up, and let me just do a git stash and just kind of show you what happens without it. So git stash, do an npm build, and watch how much slower this is. In fact, I don't know why it just, oh, it stopped because my config was probably set to like something. Uh, okay, is there a five? Here it is, 100. Row addition size. So this is the uh, argument you can kind of do to kind of change how many images you want. So let's just go ahead and do an npm build. So I just want to highlight the issues with Node. Like if you're doing a synchronous function, it can really slow down what you're trying to do. Uh, so let's change that back. Let me just show you the, the, the quick version. So I'll do git dash pop. There we go. I kind of put the code back in to make it faster. Run it again, and this is how quick it runs. Okay, so I hope you learned something. I don't know if this is the best little video, but basically use console.time console.time. It's a great way to find out where things in your code might be running slow. Just wrap different functions with them. Start off with like a large area of like figuring out, okay, is this function causing the issue? And then once you find out a function that takes a long time, narrow it down. Anytime you're doing a for loop or a while loop, you want to make sure that all the nested functions in that loop are performant because when you're looping over a thousand or 10,000 different items, every millisecond starts to add up, right? You take those 10,000 items and you times it by the execution time of the internal functions. So the main takeaways, again, use a console time and then also don't ever use file sync. Like I know if you're just trying to hack something together, you can use file write sync, but ultimately just start with file write because it's much faster and make sure that you kind of make a performant um, file IOs when you're doing Node. All right, I don't know if you guys enjoyed this video, but give me a thumbs up if you did. And also leave me a comment below if you have other ways you like debugging node code to find performance issues. And like always, if you're new to this channel, press that subscribe button, press that bell icon to get more notifications. For videos like this, that should hopefully help you understand coding a little bit better and maybe make you a better web developer. All right, happy coding.